Good morning and welcome to worship with the First Presbyterian Church of Woodbridge, New Jersey. Are we having fun yet? That is my question for the morning. Um, as you can see, I am feeling mostly well. Um, for those, you know, for those of you who haven't heard, I did test positive for COVID Friday afternoon. Um, I have tested positive in both the rapid test and the PCR test. Um, we are, are isolating in the manse as best as we can and getting creative. Um, thank you for everybody who has texted or, or emailed. Um, I, I truly appreciate your thoughts and your prayers and your offers for help, and I will probably be taking you up on them at some point when we need them. Um, for those of you who are wondering, um, labs do not report back to health centers what variant people have. So I don't know what variant I have. Labs report that to the CDC, so we don't know. Right now, um, as things are going, as you can see, I have a, I sound like I have a cold and that's about it. So I'm very happy with that. Um, I'm very, so, um, at, so right now we are still in the, um, we are going with the fact that, um, that worship will be, or that Christmas Eve will still be in person. But I will tell you with, with numbers rising everywhere, um, especially in our area session, this is your warning that we will be, um, that we will be um, discussing what our options are if we need it. I just need to give you a little heads up. Um, I'm getting some notification that something's too low. I also need to tell you that it, um, that the way Facebook has changed, for me to see myself recording, I can't read your comments. So if you're telling me something in the comments, I'm not going to know about it. If you need to tell me something, please text me. Um, yes, you know, yet again, we are making lemonade out of lemons. I have no idea, okay. So I am just moving forward, trying to figure out with new things. Yes, it is breaking up very badly. Um, okay, I hear that it's breaking up of every few seconds. I'm turning off the live. Here we are again, round two. Um, Bob has told me as long as it's recording, he will put it online. So he told me to keep going. So I'm just going to keep going. Um, also, unfortunately, because I don't have a singing voice, um, because the COVID for me is like a cold, um, there will be no carols. I do apologize for that, it, um, but we will be singing plenty of carols um, on Christmas Eve and on December 26th. If you really want to hear carols this morning, please put on some of your favorite carols yourself. Um, and let us begin as we light the Advent wreath. As we gather around the Advent wreath today, we rejoice that Christ is a time of open hearts when we sing songs of joy. Christmas is a time of wonder the moment when the busiest of us pause in wonder. Christmas happens when God comes to us in love through Jesus Christ 
and fills us with love for all humankind. Hear these words from 1 John chapter 4, verses 9 through 11. God's love was revealed among us in this way. God sent his only son into the world so that we might live through him. In this is love, not that we loved God, but that he loved us and sent his son to be the atoning sacrifice for our sins. Beloved, since God loved us so much, we also ought to love one another. We light these candles to proclaim the coming of the light of God into the world. With the coming of this light, there is love. Such great love helps us to love God and one another. Let us pray. Holy God, we thank you that Jesus showed your love for every person, babies and children, old people and young, sick people and those who were strong, rich people and those who were poor. Come to us in the Advent season and give us love in our hearts for all people. Amen. And let us join our hearts together in prayer. Holy God, be with us this morning as we encounter Mary and hear of the wondrous news that she received. Remind us that like Mary, each one of us is a bearer of your good news. We are called to proclaim hope, peace, joy, and love in your name. Open our hearts and our spirits today to receive with great joy the love that you have for us. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Dear friends, as we gather on this fourth Sunday of Advent, we have plans, we, we we do things and life seems to have plans of its own. When those things happen, we all hope that we will flex um, with grace and sometimes we don't. Let us together join in our prayer of confession. I did send this out by email. I hope you all got it. It is hard to wait patiently, O oh God, for the gift of your promised salvation. We long to nurture the joyous expectation that Mary and Elizabeth discovered in their greeting, but we have grown accustomed to living with disappointment. We yearn to feel our hearts leap within us as your spirit stirs our slumbering souls but we have allowed ourselves to find solace in lesser things. Fill us with your grace that we may give birth to hope and joy and that we might abide in your peace and love. In, your, in Christ's name we pray, amen. Dear friends, do not let your hearts be troubled. God will not fail to lift you out of complacency, forgive you, and fill your hearts to overflowing. Rise in joy and hope, for God's promises are sure, and Christ's salvation is at hand. Thanks be to God. And let us pray before we hear God's word. God of Israel, you are our source of hope, strength, and courage. As we hear your holy words, may your love and your light shine through our lives. Amen. 
The scripture this morning comes from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verses 39 through 56. In those days, Mary sent out and went with haste to a Judean town in the hill country, where she entered the house of Zechariah and greeted Elizabeth. When Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, the child leaped in her womb, and Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed with a loud cry, Blessed are you among women, and blessed is the fruit of your womb. And why has this happened to me, that the mother of my Lord comes to me? For as soon as I heard the sound of your greeting, the child in my womb leaped for joy. And blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowliness of of his servant. Surely from now on, all generations will call me blessed, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their th th from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he has made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. And Mary remained with her about three months and then returned to her home. May God add a blessing to the reading and the hearing of God's holy words. I love this passage of Elizabeth and Mary because you have two women who are bearing the children who will grow up to be John the Baptist and Jesus. And both of them have said yes to God without knowing exactly what's going to happen and how things will turn out. Their lives have been changed in ways they could never ever imagine. And yet they still greeted their God with joy, hope, and expectation. I've been thinking a lot about this since I got diagnosed with COVID. You all know me. I like my plans. I like to know what's happening, how things are going to go, how, how it's all nicely tied up. And we all know life. Life is never tied up. Life changes our, our plans, and what we had set in motion rarely happens the way that we thought it would. And yet, both Mary and Elizabeth give us ways to deal with this. Because when things happened that they did not expect, both of them responded to God with hope and joy, and they went on the journey that God laid out before them. I think that's crucial for all of us living in the time when we are done with a global pandemic, but a global pandemic is not done with us. We the best we can, need to see what comes our way as an opportunity for God to lead us in new directions and learn new things. 
That's what I really think Advent is truly about. Being open to the newness of God that is deep in us each and every day. It's not easy. It's going to stretch us and call us and make us do things we never thought we would do and most of the time weren't really planning on. And yet, God still invites us on to this journey. Mary's response was to suddenly talk all about the goodness of God and everything that God did in the past, does in the present, and will continue to do in the future. All of us could take a lesson from Mary, but also remember she was human. I'm sure there were some hysterical tears before she got to this place of acceptance. But Advent is a time of unexpected newness and joy, love, peace, and hope in ways that we never thought of. So maybe worshiping online for the fourth Sunday of Advent when your pastor gets a very mild case of COVID is what we all needed this time to remind us of how the Christ child breaks into our world in very unexpected and yet holy ways. May we all look to this final week of Advent with God's love brimming over us so that we may be ready to, to sing aloud later this week that Christ is born once again in our world and in our hearts. Amen. I invite you to join me as we affirm our faith with the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven. He sitteth on the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. I'm going to see if there are any prayer requests. I don't see any. Um, yes, I will take prayers that COVID um, continues to be pretty mild for me and that nobody else in my house gets it. Right now we have two of us with, with confirmed cases and a couple others with symptoms and the rest trying not to breathe too hard. And we are isolating together the best we can. I have a, I have a, I have a ding. Um, so, um, there are many, um, you know, COVID cases are increasing. Please keep all of them in your thoughts and prayers. People are traveling. People are making hard decisions. Um, so we hold all of them in, in, uh, in our thoughts and prayers and let us together turn our hearts and minds to God first with the silent prayers of our hearts. Let us pray.
Holy God, we thank you for this day. We thank you for the ways in which your love reaches out to every single one of us, no matter where we are or how we worship. Be with us as we continue to live through this time of pandemic, as we still continue to make plans and change them and shift when needed. Remind us that you gather us in many different ways. Remind us that our disappointments are real and yet your love will sustain us through it all. Remind us to laugh a lot, cry when needed, keep smiling and have a sense of humor. And, rem and remind us that we will have great stories to tell in the future. Let us remember always that with you is the best future any of us can have. And as we start this final week of preparing our hearts to welcome the Christ child in, May we pray for all of those who cried to you, whether we have named them aloud this day or have named them in the silence of our hearts. Today, Holy God, we pray for all those people who grieve and mourn, and we ask that they know your peace. We pray with all those people who celebrate and rejoice on this day, knowing that their celebrations are sweeter with your presence. We pray, Holy God, for all of those people who are ill, in body, mind, or spirit. We ask that your healing presence be with them and that your guidance be with all who care for them. Holy God, we also pray for all of those people who wrestle with questions that loom large and answers that feel so small. We ask that they know your hope. We also pray, Holy God, for all those people who freely give of themselves in so many different ways so that we may lead our blessed lives. We ask that you keep them safe. And always, Holy God, we pray that there would be an end to violence and war and hatred, and that your peace and your justice and your mercy come to all corners of our world. Lead us and guide us, Holy God, to be your faithful people here and now, shining forth the light of your love wherever we go. We pray this prayer and all prayers in the name of the one you sent for us, Jesus the Christ, who taught us to pray saying, Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. As we hear the call to the offering, remember you can mail in your, your offering. You can drop it by the church in our, in our mailbox, and you can also do it online on our website or through PayPal. In response to the news that she would bear God's son, Mary offered herself as God's servant and then sang a song celebrating her selection to help bring God's realm on earth. 
we have been chosen to build up the kingdom of God, so we too have reason to celebrate. Let us offer through our tangible signs of gratitude, confident that God's promises will be fulfilled through the ministries supported by our gifts. And let us pray together our prayer of dedication. Dear God, you blessed Mary by making her the mother of your only son, Jesus Christ. You have blessed us as well with the gift of the Christ child, and indeed with the gift of life itself. Out of all these blessings, we give you back these offerings this day. Knowing that your promises will be fulfilled, we pledge our lives to you in anticipation of the coming of the one who brings us peace. Amen. And now, dear friends, as we head into the final days before Christmas, may we leave this time of worship secure in the knowledge that God's promises will be fulfilled. December 25 is just six days away, but the gift that God gives us will not wear out or fade away. Let us live every day with the love of the Christ child in our hearts. And may God, our creator, Jesus Christ, our redeemer, and the Holy Spirit, which is our inspiration, be with us all this day, this night, and all our days to come. Thank you, thank you for worshiping online. Sorry, there are technical difficulties, um, but I've done the best I can um, in this not great situation. So bye, I miss all of you so much. I am praying and hoping and hoping and praying that I will see you all Christmas Eve. I will probably not wander among you. I will be done with my 10 days, but I'll probably wave from you from afar on Christmas Eve. But I am very hoping we can be together on Christmas Eve. Take care. We will be in touch. Have a blessed fourth Sunday of Advent. Bye-bye.